Welcome to our lecture on the drugs acting on the cholinergic neurotransmission, and we are going to start with the cholinergic agonist. At the end of this lecture, students must be able to describe what is a cholinergic agonist, how they work, and their major effects in the different body systems. What are cholinergic agonists? So when we say cholinergic agonist, these are drugs that increase cholinergic transmission and therefore produce all the similar effects shown by parasympathetic nervous system. Hence, these drugs are also known as parasympathomimetics or parasympathomimetic agents. So basically, when we say parasympathomimetic, that is a term used specifically to describe an acetylcholine-like effect on effector cells that are innervated by postganglionic neurons of the parasympathetic nervous system. So the other uh, synonym for the cholinergic agonist are or is cholinomimetic drugs. So these are also known as cholinomimetic drugs. So before we are going to directly discuss about these drugs, let's have first uh, a few details about the cholinergic receptors and how they work. In the previous topics, we have seen that acetylcholine acts as a mediator at both autonomic ganglia as well as the parasympathetic postganglionic fibers. So how does the same mediator, acetylcholine, produce different actions? Mediator, acetylcholine, is the same but its receptors are different. Acetylcholine receptors at the ganglia are nicotinic acetylcholine receptors whereas at the parasympathetic postganglionic fibers, they are muscarinic acetylcholine receptors. Classify the cholinergic receptors. So acetylcholine, as shown in the figure, acts on two different receptors to produce different actions. How are they classified as muscarinic and nicotinic receptors? So the evidence is based on animal experiments. These experiments give more information about the receptors and their selectivity. For example, as shown in the figure, a low dose of acetylcholine shows the following effects on the heart. Now, for example, so in the heart, there is a slowing of the heart, heart rate or bradycardia. There is also a fall in blood pressure. In the lungs, there is bronchoconstriction. In the GIT, there is an increase in the GI motility. And in the sal salivary gland, we have the salivation and lacrimation for the lacrimal gland. At the same time, a high dose of acetylcholine, as shown in the figure, shows or produces CNS stimulation. There is also a rise in a blood pressure, increase in heart rate or tachycardia. You can easily observe that at low dose, acetylcholine produces a one set of actions and high dose produces a different set of actions. So we have the same mediator, which is acetylcholine, but since they act on different receptors, they also will produce different types of effects. So for example, in the blood pressure, there is a fall in blood pressure when acetylcholine binds to muscarinic receptor. On the other hand, there is a rise in blood pressure when nicotine binds to nicotinic receptor at a high dose. So therefore, binding of acetylcholine at different receptors will produce different effects. And these receptors are also activated at different doses. So nicotinic receptors, for example, will be activated by acetylcholine at a high dose. Nicotinic re uh, muscarinic receptors, on the other hand, now are activated by acetylcholine at a low dose. So this can be further confirmed by the action of the muscarine and nicotine on these receptors. So as you can see here, the muscarine is of course an agonist of the muscarinic receptors. Nicotine is an agonist of the nicotinic receptors. So, so the first set of actions that produced by a low dose of acetylcholine or this can be reproduced by muscarine which is also an agonist of course of this receptor 
Hence, the receptors are named as muscarine receptors. Similarly, the second set of effects produced by a high dose of acetylcholine can be reproduced by nicotine. Hence, the receptor named as nicotinic receptors. So these two receptors can also be further differentiated by specific antagonist indicated by the negative sign as shown in the figure. So atropine is an example of an antagonist at this particular receptor. Blocking all muscarinic actions with no effect on the nicotinic action. So basically, you know, yung atropine, it is considered to be an anti-muscarinic agent because it will block you know, the muscarine receptors, reversing the effect of this receptor. All five types of the muscarinic receptors are GPCRs or G-protein coupled receptors because uh, they utilize G-protein in order to communicate within the cell to produce its effects. So in terms of the mechanism, they increase the intracellular levels of calcium leading to the following effects. So there is glandular secretion at the exocrine glands. Uh, in terms of the blood vessels, there is a relaxation of the vascular smooth muscles. And in terms of the heart function, so there is a decrease in the heart rate and a decrease in the contractility. So an important terms that are related to the functions of the heart are chronotropy, inotropy, and thermotropy. So when we say chronotropy, that refers to the heart rate. Inotropy, that refers to the heart contractility. And dermotropy, that refers to the rate of conduction through the AV node. Activation of the muscarinic receptors, particularly the M2 receptor, will lead to a decrease in the heart rate or decrease in the chronotropy of the heart, decrease in the contractility or decrease in the inotropy of the heart, and decrease in the dromotropy of the heart or the decrease in the rate of conduction through the AV node. The physiological effects of uh, muscarinic receptors on the autonomic ganglia and in the exocrine glands, so there is increase in the salivary and the gastric acid secretion and the aphoresis or increase in sweating. In terms of the blood vessel endothelium, so activation of the M3 receptor will lead to the relaxation of the smooth muscles and vasodilation. In terms of the respiratory system, there is a smooth muscle contraction or bronchoconstriction, and that is mediated by the M3 receptors. For the stomach, there is increase in the gastric acid secretion via the M1 receptors. For the intestine, there is increase in peristalsis, contraction of the gastroesophageal sphincter, and relaxation of the pyloric sphincter through the M3 receptors. For the eye, there is pupillary constriction, also known as meiosis, through the M3 receptors. Special mention to the heart via the M M2 receptors, activation will lead to a decrease in the heart rate due to SA node suppression. There is also a decrease in the conduction velocity and increase in the refractory period in the AV node. And a decrease in the contractility or decrease in the inotropy of the heart. For the genitourinary system, there is contraction of the detrusor muscle. So the detrusor muscle is the one that will contract in order to push the urine out of the bladder and into the urethra. Uh, there is also the relaxation of the trigon and the internal urethral sphincter to facilitate the uh, urination. In the male and the female, it will also stimulate the erectile tissue. For the nicotinic cholinergic receptors, they are ionotropic, meaning they, that they act on ion channel receptors. So when nicotinic receptors are activated, what will happen is the channel will open and it will lead to the inward movement of sodium towards the cell. Of course, this will depolarize you now the cell at the postsynaptic membrane. After that, when the cell is depolarized, it will generate an action potential. 
and the action potential will travel from one muscle fiber to the other. And ultimately, this will lead to the skeletal muscle contraction. So for the points to easily remember the locations of the different muscarinic receptors, we have here you know, a simple formula. So most of the muscarinic receptors are M3, except of course for the heart, the heart is M2, and most of the CNS are M1. And of course, uh, we also have the stomach, and uh, the stomach, particularly the parietal cells, are uh, M1. And all the other smooth muscles, exocrine glands, and the eye are M3. You know, some points to remember about the lecture. So acetylcholine is considered to be a common mediator for both muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. So, ibig sabihin, acetylcholine will act both on the muscarinic and the nicotinic receptors. It is not selective. A low dose of acetylcholine will produce muscarinic effects and a high dose of acetylcholine will produce nicotinic actions and effects. Atropine no, is uh, considered to be an anti-muscarinic drug. It is uh, an anticholinergic drug that will block the muscarinic receptors but not nicotinic receptors.